everybody. This is Dr. Jonna Talone Sullivan, and I am here today uh, with our great friends, John and Carol Leary, uh, as we end this 2023 uh, year. Uh, lots that has happened, and uh, it's the um, tomorrow's the feast of the Holy Family and uh, New Year's Eve. And I want to take this opportunity before we get started to uh, thank all of you viewers for. Um, witnessing all the wondrous talks and podcasts that we've had this year on Totus Tuus. Uh, going into this next year, I wish you vibrant health and prosperity and uh, tremendous joy of the Lord. Let us have a mental clarity of our senses uh, to train our mind, our sight, our hearing, taste, smell, everything for that to be the will of a divine will of God, that we uh, can master our emotions and we are clear on which path we are traveling uh, with tremendous peace. Um, so, uh, John? Yes. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Carol. So great to see you. Yeah. Um, why don't we start with a uh, Hail Mary and then mm -hmm. we'll go on in and then, of course, we'll end uh, with prayer as well. And in the name of the Father, and the Amen. Son, and the Holy Amen. Spirit, amen. amen. Hail Mary, Amen. Holy Grace, Holy Grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed are thou among women, women. and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us God. sinners, now, now and at the hour of our death. Yeah. Amen. Arise, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered, and all those that hate thee flee from before your holy face. Amen. Okay, well, um, by popular demand, we love to have you both on um, our podcast here. And uh, there's so much to talk about. But because we are at the end of a year, let why don't we start with uh, maybe a narrative, if you will, um, over uh, a brief overview of the, uh, the events this year. Events this year. Ooh. Well, I think I think, uh, yeah, the events this year is like what's been happening uh, right along is the Lord's unfolding before us scripture, wouldn't you say? Yeah. What he, he, but I think people, uh, for those maybe who have not heard the podcast prior, would it would be good to do a little overview of the, starting with the great event of the warning, which... Okay. People have heard about uh, from Garbendal, yes. and for um, so I don't know if John will kind of work together on this. Yeah, um, yeah. He talks about uh, and speaking of the overview of the things he's given me, he starts with the warning as the major event that would start things, and then during in the warning you would see traveling through a tunnel, you would come in front of the light of Jesus. He would have a life review of what you had, you know, all around through, through your life. Then he would show you a judgment, like a mini judgment, and actually would feel wherever you are. He, he would feel where you are at your destination of of that judgment. So some people that would be judged to have hell, for instance, they would actually feel what it would be like to be in hell, which is pretty bad. Mm. That would that's going to be a wake up call for a lot of people. Yeah. So after that judgment, then during that time of the warning, he'd also let you know not to worship, not to worship the Antichrist, not to take the mark of the beast. And even to a certain place, we're going to have to go to a place of safety called refuges uh, during the time of the tribulation. So this is, is going to be warning about warning all the people about that before. And this will happen all at once for everybody all over the world at the same time. And he's even shown me uh, some darkness before this event would happen. And then another situation, he showed me two suns in the sky on the day of the warning. So those are a couple of things I saw. And then, you want to say anything more? Yeah, he said that it would be like a comet of the warning. And then when this comet returns, it will That's... be the comet of the chastisement. Right. So it's, it's going to be the same comet. The first time, it'll come very close. And that's why... It'll appear like two suns in the sky because as it comes from behind the sun and, you know, the brilliance of a comet. So it would appear like two suns. Right. And then when it returns, 
uh, uh, yep. less than three and a half years later. Yeah. Uh, this would be striking then in the Ad Atlantic Ocean. This is victory over to evil when that comes. Yes. It's and at the very end of the tribulation. And then the, the Battle of Armageddon, yes. he said, would the be time. the conclusion. Uh, so after that, then we would be coming. Uh, well, first of all, after the warning anyway. Yes. It would you would have this um, time of conversion. It's um, without any what I learned, what I've had, and what my Father Michelle, both of us had, is that there will be uh, a time of conversion after the warning. It's called I call it the conversion, the six weeks conversion, and this would be uh, an opportunity, I think, to get back to our. It could be a, a time getting a family together to go to the refuge at one time, or you could have your family. Uh, if you're not close, you could be talking to them over the phone. So you could try and the whole point is to try and get them to be believers in God because we want to save their souls. So obviously that's the big that's thing. The big and, and and if you go to the refuge, our Lord wants us to be believers in God. In order to be get into the refuge, you're going to need to be a believer in God. And then the angels are going to put a cross on your forehead. It's un, unseen at the beginning. And so that's how you're going to be able to get into the refuges. That's why it's important to get our families to be believers so they can have the cross. Is the Some cross people, visible? Yeah, Will it be it, visible? It won't be or? in the beginning, but as you get to the refuge, it then the, becomes visible. The, um, tribulation, yes. yes, you'll yes so that. you'll know who's with you and who's against oh, yeah, you. For sure. uh, yeah, and I and I and that goes to the Tao back in yes, and in Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I think chapter nine. Uh, it talks about, it talks about the the people of God had the like the tau uh, mm -hmm. or an X or whatever on their foreheads. Right. So the angels protected these people. Mm -hmm. You know, much of what the Lord is telling us has a precedence in scripture. For sure. Uh mm -hmm. it's just like before he he separates uh or brings his judgment, he separates the good from the evil. Right. And before right. he brings any destruction. Right. Yes. Because he had the flood at the time of Noah. He brought Noah and the, the animals yeah. into the ark his and his family into the ark. They were protected. Then the flood came and the rest were destroyed. Because they were mocking him. Right. And the same with Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember, he led Lot and his family out. Yes. And I should say that uh, at this point, he says, like, Lot's wife, don't look back. He does don't not want you to see the destruction. That's right. So at the end of the tribulation, the three days of darkness, that's why he's asked us to cover our windows. We, have, we, have we some got some black plastic. Black, that was, you know, whatever. Bags. Yeah. <laughs> but that would be the easiest and cheapest, you put uh, it, I guess, over your with, windows. with duct tape. But he does not want us to see his wrath. And that's right. really very important um, to, uh, to do that. And so, and even at the time of the Passover, you know, remember, he put the blood on the doorpost. So the, the Lord is is continually using the same plan. So okay. at the refuges, mm -hmm. all the good people are going to be sent to the refuge, called to the refuge by our, our Lord. And all the people that don't get to the refuge, unfortunately, could some of them could be martyred. So he told me that. There would be mm -hmm. some martyrs. Right. So then after this, you're going through the progression. And if they don't make the refuge, it doesn't mean they're bad people. Yeah, no, or no, no. Just, no, the, no. you know, God's, various they're reasons. going, you know, the angels will take them to yeah, heaven. We, we do know some elderly people who don't want to leave their homes and that they may well be martyred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even in our Revelation chapter 20, mm -hmm. it says those who did not accept the mark, on their uh they were beheaded and yes <laughs> were, were beheaded yeah. and those uh that uh were martyred you know lost their heads would be like priests in Come the, back, the new era of peace. you know mm -hmm. so the precedent uh is there mm -hmm. but the important thing he said we're going to have to leave uh within 20 minutes our homes when your angel homes. gives you if the you're call, not a refuge when the angel gives you the call to leave, it's just like we read in the readings at Mass the other day, how Joseph was wakened at night and told, take mother and child and flee right. to Egypt. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, I, I, I got to think about this. <laughs> he just did it. 
you know? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're the kind of procrastinators. We can't be in this case. We well, gotta, you know, we'll, you, you know, you have a refuge, your place right. is a refuge and yes. uh, you've even it's had fine, little fine. practice ex events, but there are people who are trying to believe their home is a refuge too. And, uh, Obviously, if it's not a refuge, if the Lord says, no, we want you to move, they're going to move you. The angel would take you and say, you've got 20 minutes, That's let's not, go, yeah. right? And, or and, you yeah, would know that you would have to leave, that you are not a refuge. And people get a little confused when he says leaving. That means to be out your door on the road, okay? <laughs> and and he says you'll be able to take your car, you know, mm -hmm. if you leave on time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, but that doesn't mean you have to be to the refuge place with no. in 20 minutes. You need it's to leave your place. Just, just leave your place house. to get out the door. Because you got to take your bag or whatever yeah, you're going to So bring it's wise you. if you don't have a refuge to have a little backpack mm -hmm. prepared mm -hmm. with what you want to take, mm -hmm. like if you're going camping, you know. Because mm -hmm. um, he said otherwise you're going to have to go out your back door on foot. Oh, yes. And, uh, see, the reason uh, people are going to be threatened, you're going to have these. So he called them the UN troops dressed in black will be trying to force the mark of the beast on the people. That'll be some of the reason why this is going to be a very dangerous time. That's that's what he was. Uh, oh, yeah, so that's absolutely. what that's when you would be leaving in the back door if you're not leaving in time. Yes. And what is what is this mark of the beast? The mark of the beast. Uh, I've, I've seen it. Uh, there's different things. Uh, some people call it a physical mark on the forehead or on the hand. Uh-huh. Um, that's that's what's in the scripture. Anyway. But does that come from yeah. this digital yeah. dollar that yeah, we're in the process, or does it come from actually the digital uh, food dollars, or the digital you know, dollars the lead in to the COVID market? Shots, vaccines. Yeah, the, the digital dollar is going to control the money, change our money, actually. And the what will follow will be this mark of the beast. That if you don't have that mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy or sell. So no matter whether you had gold or silver or anything. Uh, if you don't have that mark, you wouldn't be able to buy and sell. So that's that's why that's going to be a difficult thing, and they're going to try and force that on us. It's like a mandate. Mm -hmm. That's what's, that's one of that's one of the signs to go to the refuge, actually. Right, and then they, they go actually house to house to try and yeah, that's what uh, or are. the quarantines yes. or things of that nature. Not yeah, quarantines, that little that's plate a different one, the quarantine prisons. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I believe uh, Sweden has had quite a few people already taking the mark of the beast. I've I've read. That's a and, trip in, the body, uh, in Spain. For the most part. So there are people that already have it, but okay. it's not uh, the Lord. Mandatory. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not mandatory. One, one of the things he said, you could remove this mark of the beast, the physical chip, as, as long as before the Antichrist declares himself. Once the Antichrist declares himself, you couldn't remove it. That's what I have. Oh. Because there are some people that do have it. Okay. <laughs> But they but, don't understand it as the mark of the beast. They think it's, a, and you got to believe with all the credit card fraud and <clears throat> so much going on, it's going to be an extremely attractive way of buying and selling. That's right. Because the digital uh, dollar, now my, my daughter was reading how eight of the major banks already are using the digital dollar with their uh, big businesses. Right. So mm -hmm. it's this Absolutely. is already happening it's just not filtered down to all the yeah, everyday just, well yeah we we know a cashless society has started years and years that's and years that, ago that's that's the uh, i mean yeah but we still had cash around but right you know even with the credit card we're not really it's all like yeah. digital when they uh, have the digital now they're dollar. doing something different now when they're trying to do a new currency right and uh so sorry go ahead when they have the digital dollar, they're going to take all the current money out of circulation completely and the cash mm -hmm. and the change. And the gold. And the and then you just have this, um, I don't know, they call them different kinds of credits, they have different names for it. But it, basically, it convert your dollars to the new credits. And these are like, um, and they can be controlled just like in China. They call them, uh, it's like social credits. I don't know if you understand. Oh. But that, if you do something good, to their liking, you'll you'll be okay. But if you start doing anything, what I consider consider religious yeah. or conservative kind of things, or um, buying too much, you food. get demerits or you'll yeah. lose credits. So eventually, they could take away all your money. Yeah, they, they block like, you like or they you take your person. money. Gotcha. Yeah, let me, I want to uh, just say something right here. We know we're talking about money. <laughs> um, 
There's been, you know, I've heard comments about um, both of you, um, well, as, as your family, about your receiving financial compensation. Oh, yeah. so and I let's speak to that because, I mean, yeah. I know you don't, yeah. but I want to make it clear to our viewers, some of the yeah. comments I have received um, on the podcast uh, has been, you know, related to financial compensation. Mm -hmm. Let me just ask you point blank. Do you, John and Carol Leary, take financial compensation for the, the works that you do for the, the glory? The only money we ever took was for, for travel, mostly. Travel ex cost. Um, if someone wants you to go. actually lose money on it. Her and father, she, he, he wanted us to make money on it too, but we said <laughs> no. It was from God and that we needed to not make money on it. That was Yeah, it. they just pay for, uh, you know, if we have to take a plane or if we uh, drive for gas money. Uh, for gas money, and you I mean, know, some people give us donations, just, but we don't normally take donations. We don't that. ask for any donations, no. and and um, the people that you know, as I say, give us gas money or uh, for our yeah. meals if we're what, what we driving. Get, what we pay for the books, we sell. It's and actually a forty percent discount. Yeah, we sell. So they get a yeah. deal when they buy when they buy them from us. We don't make any profit on the books either. And I would say this: I mean, even priests and nuns and all types of religious of all re different religions as well, um, when they speak or they they do services or retreats, I mean, there is either a stipend, a donation, or you actually pay for the the retreat. It's all for their the good of their works as um, you know, yeah. the yeah, order or yeah. whatever. We, so we have social security and I pension. So it kind of keeps us going. Well, yeah. We right. don't really so need that. Money's not our goal. You know, yeah. So we never talk and never charge a stipend to speak. No, you no know? but my point is if yeah. someone wants you to come and speak, all right, oh. and they have offered to pay your travel expenses, right. well, that's that's then that's th different. there should be oh. no. Okay. So oh. we've cleared this this uh right. issue up right. now and so it we, is we now said, ended in the beginning uh money is kind of the root of all evil For sure. and <laughs> and this was a gift from god uh that uh we had no right to ask money for right. a, a gift like this and mm -hmm. uh and as i say we have our pension and we have uh you know our little savings and stuff so mm -hmm. We're, we're not extravagant people. We lead a pretty simple life. Right. <laughs> right. But uh, I mean, money right. itself is not evil. It's, no. right. I mean, there are right. a lot of wealthy yeah. people, affluent yeah. people yeah. who Do give to great causes. It's, it's the it love of money is. that is yeah, right. it's, the, the issue. Right. So, all right. Well, let's move on because that's there's so much to talk <laughs> about. I don't want to discuss sure. this again. It's, it's over. <laughs> so we know the truth. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's let's move on. I know we. Um, um, why don't we talk about how, how to to prepare for serious events uh, that's coming uh, briefly? You know how what I know you've gone over and over again, but just right. a little overview: how we prepare. You know, water, food. You know, certain oh, supplies. Two preparations actually. Okay. The Here one the one preparation he's talked about for I consider. He, possibility of a famine anyway he said to have three months of food on hand and that's okay. not just uh people at the refuge it would be people, everybody everybody that's that's just uh i call it food insurance if you will it's <laughs> if there's a shortages or something you would have food ongoing for a little while yeah. the other situation gets when when there, there's really bad connections to get food and as your lives are being threatened so to speak by not having food and electricity and all that that's when you get to the point where you probably get called by jesus to come to the refuge and when you come calls us to the refuge uh we call on jesus we have his we call on his angel and his angel is going to leave uh, uh, basically our guardian angel they're going to lead you if you're not at a refuge they're going to lead you with a flame physical flame to the nearest refuge that's that's what he told me, and, and the pack that we take is to help us uh, supply us on the way. But the people that have a refuge now, of course, yeah, they have to. That's have a to refuge do builder, a, almost. Yeah, you're talking yeah, about a little, there. Uh, quite a bit more preparation, of course. I, I want to stress first: the spiritual is the most important, of course, because the 
the Lord said every refuge is going to have to have 24 hour adoration. Right. This is key to the multiplication of the food and the water and all the other wonderful uh, things they're, they're going to be doing for you. Right. So I, I, I don't want people to just go away thinking no, it's, it's just food. the food because the prayer is key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, we you can have food and, and um, canned goods. He said the canned goods would not expire. Mm -hmm. So that's a sign it's not 20 years away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dried food, uh, which needs water to reconstitute, and the MREs, the meals ready to eat that the military uses. Mm -hmm. So now he told us to prepare for 40 people, mm -hmm. and he's going to send us 5,000. Okay, so this is going to be some <laughs> that's, major that's multiplication. A, that takes a, another explanation. Yeah. Let me just finish up a little bit on that spiritual thing. Okay. What he told me about in the spiritual is when people come to the refuges, um, he's going to have um, either a priest do the mass, so you'll have daily Holy Communion, or if you don't have a priest at a refuge, uh, he's going to have your angels bring uh, daily Holy Communion to you, and you're going to take one of the hosts Hopefully you'll have a monstrance. He's asked us to have one. Uh, and you'll put one of the hosts in the monstrance so that you're going to have perpetual adoration all the time. And during that time, when you're at during, during the refuge, during the tribulation, um, you're going to have people signed up for different hours. So you'll be having at least somebody, one or two people in front of the Blessed Sacrament all the time, worshiping all around the clock. And the, and the power there coming from the Blessed Sacrament this is what's going to be the, the uh, power, if you will, from Jesus to give you the multiplication of the food and the fuels and the water. Without that faith in the multiplication, it won't happen. So that's why that uh, spiritual is so important. Gotcha. Um, um, do they call you to the refuge after the warning and after the six weeks? He said most right? likely this would happen after the six yeah, weeks. Okay. All right. Just yeah, there'd to be no it. evil influence in that six, yeah, six weeks. weeks. Period. That's right. But then once the Antichrist comes to power. Oh, yeah. Now, we might mention uh, in 2007, John saw the Antichrist being crowned in oh, yeah. Egypt, Egypt and how he came out of Egypt. And Actually, I had a message before that happened. Yes. Yes. In, in 2007, uh, he had that message. And uh, Steve Quayle reported last year. In fact, it was at election time when they had the summit in Egypt. In fact, the Antichrist was crowned. So he, yeah. this already yeah. now has given in him his power to, to uh, you know, to he told me that would his, happen. Uh, his reign. Mm -hmm. So it seems like he's just now in waiting close. for yes. the events. Mm -hmm. And I think it's no, uh, people know who he is too. I mean, it used to be a hidden thing, but now it's, um, it's not, not that we want to talk about that, but is that correct? I mean, yeah, you know who he is. He's, he's, still, he's, in, he's on the earth. Let's, yeah, is he in one. England now? Or is he in, he yeah, that's what I have. Yeah. yeah. But the important thing to remember is that uh, he told us, don't look up information on him because there can be some negative. On his name. You know, oh, okay. Name. Yeah. So that's he will have a different saying. name when he declares himself. Yeah. yeah. He'll use a different name when he declares himself. Gotcha. Right. You know, oh, gotcha. well, there's um, certainly a lot of uh, anything else for the uh, the uh, pre preparation the food, for a serious yeah, time, the food, the water, talking about the food, water, spirituality, you have a well. And then, of course, uh, well, some people food. don't have a well, but yeah. I would think yeah. if you have co like, containers of water there, enough, the it. Lord you will multiply what you have. Multiply yeah. what you have. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, we did little spiritual packets, like, you know, a gallon Ziploc bag to put a rosary and a scab to a little holy water. You hand water. out to the people when they and come. And then we had another little one for uh, hygiene, you know, a toothbrush, toothpaste, pail. soap, and, <laughs> and a pail for washing. And yeah, we're not going to have sponge showers. Beds, probably not showers. Yeah, that'll probably be the biggest <laughs> trial for most of us. No hot water. <laughs> you know? Ouch. So... Uh, I guess just think of how you would live if you if your power was gone. I know. Mm -hmm. independent living. And I call a it. source of heating, you know, a kerosene heater, wood stove. Yeah. And a means of cooking. Yeah, you got to have some fuels for all those, of course. Yeah. So, uh, and then we put in some solar. But now recently, um, 
you could mention he oh he bought yeah, this is tools. one of my more recent developments uh when we did overnight uh practice runs for refuge we were using uh these these pull-up lanterns but they only lasted about 10 hours at the most and so i i thought when I should have a little better source of for electricity for, for the power. So I've been getting, I've got about five, you don't have to do all that, but I'm just saying what I did. I got five of these, uh, I call them solar generators. They're like lithium batteries. And if you put two lights on, maybe 10, if you got those LED lamps in it, you know, those kind of lights in there, um, it, that's about 20, 20 um, watts, 20 watts. And it, it would last any anyway, these batteries would last anywhere from 30 to 60 hours on just burning those lights, even okay. if you did it all the time. I mean, straight, but obviously, you probably only do it when it's dark. Yeah, <laughs> so mean, they're solar generators. Is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, they call them solar yeah. generators, they're lithium batteries, basically. Okay. And they also have uh, they, they sell them with uh, panels that I well, they, you okay, can't just... get too much power from the panels, and you know, no this letter. time of the year. But as as the get more sun and more light, it, they they work a little better. Well, wow. they they charge up real fast. The batteries uh, when you first get them, you can just put them on the sockets. You know your regular electric socket for now, and you can uh, charge them up uh, within an hour. So oh, that's great. I yeah. guess when the three days of darkness happens, though, nothing's going to oh. be so. Oh, yeah, no, they probably, it's, it's going to be dark. Have yeah, you gotta have those blessed candles. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a little right. different source. <laughs> but I think you found the best when you bought it at Home Depot and how yeah, much the was Evo, it? Flow. Yeah, Everflow. Everflow. Echo Flow. Oh, Echo. They had, uh, I think, it was a thousand dollars for one one of the batteries, lithium batteries, and the. A thousand dollars for one lithium battery? Yeah, no lithium battery. Well, and and no, the four hundred watt panel that comes. Oh, with. okay. And then you could just light that in your yard. Yeah, you think that's expensive? The other one I got was two thousand dollars a piece. Wow. <laughs> so they, come in, they come in different prices. <laughs> but anyway, um, we don't okay. want to get you know yeah, too know. technical. But the the point but... of that was to have regular light instead of just these little right small lights. Okay. Well, you know, this is the chemist part of, of John. Like you know, play with some, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> fine. You know, everyone everyone has a gift of what they they do. That's right. the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. So and that's just an ever ready battery that you are, John. You keep going and going and going. <laughs> yeah, okay. <the> bunny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get let's, uh, go yeah. on to a couple other things. Um, okay, let's talk about the church. Okay. Now, I'm going to say a couple things. Um, we know that the Pope Francis, uh, there's been a lot of controversy over him. Um, there's uh, There was a synod of synodality. Um, he's had the, has a, uh, approved the blessings of same sex. He's doing, he's done Latin mass crackdowns. He's, you know, oppositions to Christ sacraments, uh, women, ordinations blessing of same-sex unions he's canceling bishops um mm -hmm. who uh well we know about bishop strickland and who says you know a guy cannot bless sin um he's that's provided that's uh he's recently provided the keynote he address to the clinton global initiative um which is an organization that's really filled with left-wing advocates and uh, pro-abortion politicians. He's mm -hmm. been very vocal about climate change as a oh, big okay. uh, challenge for the mm -hmm. world where his focus should be the big challenge is to keep souls and to bring souls of Christ I into. Right. So, uh, and I know there's probably a limit as what you can speak about Yes. Uh, him, I think we see a schism here, bishops against bishops, a lot of things that have been, been proclaimed through Garen Bindal and other mystics and things of that nature. So okay. what is happening uh, well, in the church? There's say, a lot of confusion. All, that, all anything that you could talk about. All the messages that he's given me, well, I have to be a little careful with that subject, but um, <laughs> basically he said, we should be following what's taught in the catechism of the Catholic Church and go by those teachings. And if something comes up, and I won't say the source, but if something comes up that goes against the Catholic teaching and the, the catechism, 
Then he said, you don't have to follow it. That's what I was given. Okay. Period. That's that's as succinct as I can put it. <laughs> right. You know, a lot of people say he's the precursor now to the Antichrist or he's working with, yeah, you know, the so we're not going to discuss it, but I think there's a lot of people the same mindset. Um, and we're watching, I mean, it's a lot of confusion. And so we pray, we pray to be, uh, protected and have clarity. This is why I think going the next year, we have uh, a blessing of, uh, really, uh, being strong minded, clear minded. And, uh, so that we, we can know the truth, be always open to that wisdom, right? This is why he gave you the catechism of Catholic church. It's like the rudder that keeps you going on a straight path mm-hmm. so you don't get off channel off the right course <laughs> okay beautiful well let's uh there are a couple other things i know we want to talk about um uh we talked about refugees anything that you would like you got your choice angels or elections which one would you like to talk oh, about wow. <laughs> you want to talk about angels that was carol had one little there you go experience. thank yeah. you carol <laughs> well you know Jan gets the messages. I don't. So I, I like all the rest, most everybody else. Okay. So every year on the anniversary of the guardian angels, he gets a, a message from his little angel, Mark. from his Mark angel, Mark. Mark. So I was told by a priest and another person as a gift that I have two angels, you know? So I said to him, well, do you think you could see if the Lord would allow my angels to give me a little word, wow. <laughs> you know, so that was not a, not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, cause be careful what you ask for. You might get it right. Um, that's what so, so I think what was, was beautiful about it though, uh, it, it gave uh, a little more understanding about our guardian angels. So what happened, the, the message came like, don't think because you have two angels and somebody else has one angel that you're more special <laughs> <laughs> so that flattened me out <laughs> a little bit uh mm-hmm. but the, what was interesting he said that the that the angel you are given is directly from the choir most relevant to the mission you've been given oh. that's right it's very important so i, I think that's what it's, it's interesting for people to know, you know, like I said, you know, I probably have two angels, the, the worker bee angels, you know, and I wouldn't minimize the angels no, power, but I don't mean that because they're, they're very powerful. Yeah. And I, and I should say like our Meridia, who is our prayer group angel and our refuge angel, refuge angel uh, it was kind of interesting on the angels, the message John had last year we had moved things around in the chapel because we had a mass. So her picture, the painting that we had done of her was sitting on the lower level of the <laughs> priest table. Oh yeah. And she asked to be moved back up because so see it, but... of all the work she's doing for us. <laughs> <laughs> so can't minimize their help. <laughs> so, yeah. So I think it, it gave me a, a more of an appreciation mm-hmm. of of our angels and how much they really do to do for us. I mean, I think sometimes like I've been like, and somebody's in a blank spot when I'm driving and oh my God, I I could have been hit, you know? Yeah, they guard us. I think they do guard you. They they really guard us many ways that we don't even appreciate or think about. Mm -hmm. Mm So um, I I just kind of shared that, you know, I have to, uh, humble, pie, humble pie. myself a little bit on this, <laughs> but that's good. We all need yeah, humbling. Well, I guess, and the angels that are from the nine, oh, one of the nine choirs, nine choirs. Of the throne of the angels, the celestial court of uh, angels. Uh, it, you may not know what your mission is, but that's your angel true. does, oh, and yeah. will make sure that you do. Yeah, uh, as long as you're open to it, and tries. And so it's good that we uh, have communication. I mean, to be open to the Holy Spirit as the angels can um help us did you and wanna, i'm sure we did could you want to get into that about what our, our granddaughter had um, is that jess a, oh well oh, maybe you don't want to say her name it, it was uh she had she wondered why god created satan if he if he knew that 
people were going to go to hell because of that. Yeah, she was only like six That's years old. That's a very of six uh, years old, profound yeah. question. Yes, yes, yeah, like, I'll and, say. And she, she was just really asking a very sincere question. And I think from that, we can understand that the Lord really listens to oh, our yeah. prayers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he knows every detail of our That's life, right. what's going on. And uh, that was fact, a significant I, answer. That's why it, it just really made such an impression on us. Uh, and so I want to read it verbatim. Okay, because, go ahead. Because it really gives some insights. Six okay. So she, so she said, <clears throat> why did God create Satan when God knew Satan would lead many souls to hell? So that night, the Lord answered it because we didn't have a, a really a, a good answer, but the Lord the answered time. it. He said, Jesus said, my people, I created the angels, man, and the universe, and everything that's in it, I found everything was good of itself and gives greater glory to me. The angels and man I created in my image, and I gave each a soul and a free will. If I did not give you a choice to serve me or not, then you would only exist without any higher decision-making power. I knew that even angels could possibly refuse to serve me. If I hesitated to create angels because they might abuse their free will, then I would never have desired to create them in the first place. That's pretty thought profound. So if you had a choice to have children or not, you also face the possibility that they could turn out to be evil killers. But you have children out of love, hoping that by your influence, you could bring them up as loving contributors to society. Wow. This is the same reason that I created angels with free will so they could choose to love me and serve me for my glory. Every act of creation is an act of love in sharing life, whether it be an angel or a human. I did not create Satan to cause evil. It was Satan's refusal to serve me that caused his casting out of heaven into hell. It has been his influence to try and get other souls to refuse my service that has caused souls to also be cast into hell. I created every soul out of love and only sin stands between us. Repent of your sins and show your love for me and your neighbors and you will enjoy the heaven that I meant every soul to attain. Yeah, that's pretty so I thought that was a pretty powerful Amazing. response to a, a little six-year-old. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah really. That's why I say I couldn't have come up with the words. As, yeah, we keep so referring well. to that message quite a bit, actually. Yes, because, you know, we do have some friends that are always saying, how come bad things happen to good people? You know, oh, that's yeah. the that's question of for the age, you know, mm -hmm. but free it's will, well. free, free will is. And, you know, there's even uh, also people are very prayerful and good people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the Lord's really shares his suffering mm -hmm. with people that are very intimate and close to him mm -hmm. and they are elevated up to that level. Right. That's right. Of suffering and passion. So it's a real gift, but mm -hmm. it's hard when it happens, you know, because we are human and we just have to take yeah. baby steps and just embrace it like that yeah. right great I, any other is that it for the angel no, part because i'm going to head on yeah, to elections to, the uh <laughs> i'm trying to think here the, well there's so much to talk about you know what i mean i don't want to uh, you know, know we only have so much time and so yeah. um of course time what is time i mean we can yeah. do as long we Whatever. Okay. I don't it, want to. That's a good point, because he did have one on eternity. That's and another one of favorite, yeah. this is what, favorites. This is in volume three, but this okay. is one of my favorites. The it message really of the Word of God. Sure, makes you think. He said, "I could see a large flaming abyss that seemed to have no bottom. Many hell. souls were falling into hell." Jesus said, "My dear children, my mother and I are both sorrowing for how many souls are being lost in hell." My children, you must realize how serious it is to lose your soul to the evil one. Eternity in hell is an eternal banishment from my sight and a severe and painful suffering forever. 
All of this is because those souls refuse to accept me as Lord of their lives. Your selfishness and desires of earthly things can bring you to this place of torment. My children, you must struggle to stop your abortions and your sins of the flesh. If you do not convert your lives, you will meet with this fate of eternal punishment in hell. Reach out to those lost souls and plead with them if you could only bring them to me. Let them come to eternal love with me and not eternal hate from Satan. How many times must I seek you to bring you to your senses? Your sins bring you a false pleasure for a short time, but you are trading a brief satisfaction for an eternity of grief. Think of how long eternity is. You think in terms of a number of years, but how can you imagine a number with an infinite number of zeros? Oh my gosh. A number with oh an infinite my number gosh. of zeros. If you had time to live all the lives of everyone that ever existed, it would not even scratch the surface of eternity. Oh, my goodness. So come to me now, my children, and seek my forgiveness of your sins. See, eternal beauty and love with me far surpasses any thought of being with the hideous faces of the demons and their hate for you. Mm -hmm. Choose life and you will be forever with the light. Choose death and you will curse the darkness forever. Well, that's a pretty powerful one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. can see why it's a favorite. Well, yeah. It, it, that's, so, what year, though? That's volume three. What year was that? Yeah, that was um, 97, July 21st. Oh, that's the anniversary of the messages. That's right. July, I mean. On the 21st. On the yeah. July 21st. Uh, in 1997 yeah. but sometimes I mean it's just said with such power and I know. you know it it's really what do you well add? that is it doesn't that message is like okay we're ending this year 2023 but that message <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what the time is so nor the time quick. of this podcast so forget what everything i said yeah, right. happy new year for all eternity with the yeah. jesus sure. risen christ that's, that and points that's you though how important it is to yeah. how you choose what you're doing in life that was the point point. and you know there are we i think we talked about this too sometimes we go off in the wrong way that's and right. the angels and our lord and prayer bring us back and we and have confession. We yeah, and you use the sacrament of reconciliation and right. and your prayers. The Lord knows your sincerity. Right. I know. Uh, and uh, you know that happened to Saint Teresa Avila. She right. strayed. You know, she after that said, "Never, ever, ever stray from God. No, don't even want that to ever happen to you." Um, so, um, all right. Well, um, I'm not going to use the word time. Well, let us move on to <laughs> there you go. Yeah, right. <laughs> to elections. Now mm -hmm. it's coming the new year, the last year, a new. We have a lot of things. Uh, any messages that you want to share about elections? You know, people are wondering. Um, you know, uh, it, authenticity of of uh, elections. The biggest, the biggest problem I've seen. Well, I mean, you, you can see. There's a couple of big things. I mean, for me, the the open borders and some of the bad things that are going on with our economy and stuff like that, that's obvious. But on the other hand, the, the idea of the elections, the biggest problem, in my view, that he's talked about, he's even mentioned it, how you have so much, there's a possibility, let's say, of a lot of cheating going on. And no matter how good a candidate is or how bad a candidate is, it, gets 86 million votes sitting in the basement. I mean, that that's, <laughs> gives you a little pause for reality here. Um, so, yeah, there's, there was a lot of cheating going on. I mean, the most Lord people did. don't want to believe it, but it's going on. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's a big thing about the elections that, that he had on, on these people. Well, he did, he did say in 2016 that uh, the angels oh, yeah. changed the cheating cheated votes back, back and that's how been. trump won in 2016 oh no kidding well you know well, the, look what people too. are trying to do now to, to oh. just to make sure he doesn't get on a ballot i know uh, that's, that's, that's this whole thing that's the other thing evil in all levels uh i mean this whole thing like with with uh where was it um 
Colorado. Colorado. And yeah. there was another, yeah. I think Maine, 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 Maine too, was right. another one. And so this whole idea failed. of taking, of the judges being allowed to take people off the ballot, that's really major against our constitution. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be like a decision, something from the Supreme Court to mm -hmm. take that whole thing. Because I mean, what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen. Then the other side is going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to have? Again, a lot of candidates not on the ballot. I mean, yeah. in different states. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. He, he talked about uh, it, it needs to be on that subject. It, it needs to be people need to have the right to vote who they want. It shouldn't be just because somebody doesn't like them that they take them off the ballot by a judge. I mean, they're they're reaching for straws, in my view. Trying well, to I, 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 there must be a group or some. Uh, I I don't know everyone who's involved there, but there must be a group or someone a power. Mm -hmm. that is manipulative and oh, yeah. one and we think we're to, free but i'm wondering if, how if free really we really are get down to it i mean zuckerberg he, he spent 417 million dollars trying to sway the election let's put it that way because he he was manipulating the you know the drop boxes and all the rest of that stuff i mean mm -hmm. that that's where all the money went so yeah uh, well, you could read last last night's message and this morning. Yeah, those that, are two powerful ones. That he this is about kind of next, addressed talking about the next year. Oh, okay. So addressed what this. what these are messages okay. now that our yeah. Lord has given that yeah this, this, about this. this, this was, I'll first this read new one year. from this morning because he's talking Carol's ask, ask him if he's got anything for next year. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> so I gotta get my glasses out. Okay. Okay. And you need to move in the camera. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> there you um, go. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, this was uh, last, uh, this morning, the 30th of December. I could see a bright light in the heaven shining down on the darkness of the world. And Jesus said, my people, St. John, because that was the reading, St. John is talking to the fathers, the young men, and the children about avoiding worldly temptations. The worldly people focus on the worldly appetites and and sensations, and they are far away from loving me. If these people do not repent and accept me as their savior, then they could be lost in hell. But I shine down my light against the dark evil that inhabits the earth. Those people who listen to my word and act on it will be the souls who will be with me in heaven forever. There's that ever again. Everything in this world is passing away. So do not love the world, but seek to bring souls to me and focus on heavenly things. And this is a, the second part of this. There are some people, Carol loves this part, there are some people who are looking for signs and prophecies for the coming year, but the only <laughs> but the only sign I gave was the sign of Jonah, when the people of Nineveh changed their evil ways and they fasted and sat in ashes. Well, we don't have to do the sitting in ashes, but we can fast and repent. As you enter the end times, you will see famine, earthquakes, and pestilence. You also you are also seeing wars and rumors of wars. Be prepared to come to my refuges when you see the digital dollar imposed, the mandated mark of the beast, the pandemic viruses, and your power outages. When your lives are in danger, I will call you to my refuges with an inner locution. This will come after my warning and the six weeks of conversion. So he's just trying to put that in, in perspective because some people are always asking for things. <laughs> yeah. This other one was last night. It's sort of an overall message, a little bit of an overview. Uh, I could see a time when the evil ones will destroy our electric grid. We, if you understand, when you don't have electricity, unfortunately, we've been so accustomed to that. It really uh, could throw our whole economy off. And, and if it's any duration, it could even cause a famine up to the point of, he like says in here, killing 90% of the people. I mean, it's pretty bad. Uh, some people could survive for a while without electricity. But having enough food will be a problem along with people stealing food and water. So that's a, how you protect it. Jesus said, my people, the evil ones who want to reduce the population will use either a worse pandemic virus or they will destroy your electric grid. They can do that with an EMP attack, a bomb, or different ways. These evil ones will try to force the mark of the beast on everyone. Refuse to take the mark of the beast for any reason. You will see my warning and then the six weeks conversion to try and evangelize people to believe in me. After the six weeks, your lives will be threatened, and I will call my faithful to my refuges for protection and your survival needs. Before the Antichrist comes into power, 
the UN troops will try to force the men in black, will try to force the mark of the beast on everyone. Those Christians who are captured could be martyred for not taking the mark of the beast. During the tribulation, my angels will put invisible shields over my refuges. You will have perpetual adoration at my refuges, and by your faith, I will multiply all of your needs of water, the fuel, and all that. At the end of the tribulation, I will bring my victory over the evil ones with my comet of chastisement. All the evil ones will be cast into hell. I will renew the earth, and I'll bring my faithful into my air of peace. Do not be concerned when all of these things will start, but know that I will protect you and feed you at my refuges. So he's trying to give us a, a confidence there. Well, that message just said it all. That that yeah. one and the one yesterday, this morning, yes. uh, it says just about everything we talked about today. Very, very exactly. That very, was a summation type. I, I think that one thing we didn't uh, touch on is is the good end of the story. Of course, <laughs> you know, at Fatima, Our Lady spoke about in the end, her heart will triumph in an air of peace given right. to the world. Mm -hmm. We have to think in terms of Our Lady's understanding of peace not ours yes. and um in the new era you know, he, he can explain you know right. the trees of life yeah he, just like we had the the tree of life in the garden of eden he said we'll be eating from the trees of life and that's why we'll, people will be living a lot longer yeah and it'd be in perfect balance of nature that's why you know the lamb lays down with the lion yeah that's uh, the description of the earth. You know, so we'll be vegetarians. That's I'm sorry right. yeah, for you no meat. people that hunt. <laughs> no more <laughs> survival of the fittest. No more survival. But total peace will be a much simpler life. Absolutely. Uh, totally centered around the Lord. Absolutely. In fact, he, I think one that struck me, I love, he talked about temples of golden light where we would go in oh, to yeah. pray. Okay, how can you imagine temples of gold and light to, to pray? Yeah, so nice there's been some very beautiful on the earth piece for sure. Uh things. And a lot's in Isaiah, you know, yeah. too, you know, in scripture. So any any more of your favorite messages that you can think of that you want to <laughs> I think we hit the highlights. They're, they're really beautiful. I mean, yeah, I love yeah, there, there's a lot more, but those couple just we always the big ones. Uh, you can get the messages oh, yes. on right. johnleary.com. That's my website. Or you can get the books from uh, Queen Chip Publishing. Mm -hmm. And their, their phone number is 1-800-647-9882 at Queen Ship Publishing. Or they have their website, queenship.org. Right. right. And um, then we do a Zoom every... Yeah, I mean, third and fourth Wednesdays mm -hmm. on, on my website. I have the numbers to get into the zoom. Like the Oh, YouTube. good. <laughs> yeah. JohnLeary.com. Yeah. So you can get the numbers each time. I've got to put it's it on the what Wednesday, the fourth Wednesday. What? And the first third and the fourth oh. Wednesdays of each month. We try to do yeah. it. The, fourth. The, the second one, the first one is in English. The second one it's English, but translated also in Spanish. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you guys for being okay. part oh, of you, my Jana. life. Right. <laughs> thank you, John. It's wonderful. You're going to close with St. Michael? Yes. Yeah. Because we, we're going to close we with prayer. The power of to defeat the evil that we're dealing with That's right. in this time, especially in, in this election year. You know, mm -hmm. St. Michael, 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 the Archangel, Archangel defend us in battle. Be our protection, protection against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God, God rebuke me humbly, humbly pray. pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, host by divine power of God, cast in hell Satan and all the evil spirits, spirits throughout the world, seeking the world, 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 world of soul. Amen. 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 God bless you both. Thank Have you. a uh, beautiful, timeless <laughs> New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Year. Okay. God love you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, Thank you. for joining us. We'll see you Thank again. You. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.